Hey everybody, Doug here, one of the hosts and creators of the Genre of Your Life podcast. I'm bringing you a bonus episode this week, bit of a deep dive, uh, behind the scenes look into the show, you know, my backstory, the show's backstory, uh, how I met Nick, how I met Joel, how I met Moses, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, again, as always, if you can follow us, leave us a nice rating um, or a review on your favorite podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music. It helps the show out tremendously. You know, we're 12 episodes in so far. We're having so much fun, and your support means the world to us. Again, as always, like, subscribe, rate us, uh, leave us a nice review on the show on your favorite podcast platform. Again, helps show, helps the show out tremendously, and thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get into it, shall we? All right, so, again, as you might know, my name is Doug Jones. Um, I'm born and raised in uh, Chicago, Illinois, uh, downtown. Go Cubs. Um, you know, I've always loved movies and TV. I mean, it's like something I can remember. Um, I remember watching uh, Back to the Future on VHS with my parents one weekend, and I was mesmerized by the screen. I was like, this is magic. I mean, how, how am I seeing time travel? How am I seeing a DeLorean, you know, going through, you know, time and space? It just it blew me away. Again, I was glued to the screen. I think I had my dad, my mom re- rewind the TV so many times because, again, I was so just like, in shock, and then I heard, oh, there's part two, part three, I said, are you kidding me, there's more of this, and I was just so amazed by it, and that's when I think I just fell in love with movies, because, you know, just, like, I was blown away by, you know, the DeLorean, you know, um, Marty McFly, Doc Brown, um, it just, all of that, it just, again, it just it blew me, it blew me away, and I was like, how can movies do this, and I felt something in my core, that again, I still remember to this day of, like, just feeling different, and ever since then, you know, I've, just fell in love with movies, everything, even TV, but mostly movies. And, you know, growing up, uh, going to the movies was like a big kind of like, uh, it's like a religious, religious experience for myself because it was like going to the opera, you know, going to Super Bowl. To me, it was like, oh, we're going to the movies today. I used to get so excited. Like, we're going to see this movie. We're going to see this movie. And again, my parents would tell you this uh, as a kid, <laughs> I loved everything. No matter what movie it was, I loved everything I saw, whether it was, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, Spy Kids, um, uh, C-Spot Run, uh, I'm trying to think what else, I mean, again, Harry Potter, like, every movie I saw, I just loved, I just blew me away, because, you know, as a, when you're a kid, you're just, you're so amazed by the show, the movie itself, and, you know, the movie magic, you know, how, how can I see someone fly, how can I see magic, how can I see all this stuff, and it's just, again, as a kid, you're just, like, mesmerized, so, to me, growing up was just all about the movies, every weekend if I could. Um, you know, my mom did a special thing for me when, uh, when I was growing up on, well, we had half days of school on Fridays. We get, we get out a couple hours early and my mom would bring myself, and my little brother Fletcher to a place in Chicago called the Cambridge house. And they had, you know, back in the day, they had this huge, huge burgers. We get a burger and a shake. And after that, we were the movies and no matter what it was, whether it was a kid's movie or a superhero movie or another Harry Potter movie, it just, to me, like that was like the best Friday ever. And then on the weekends, too, my dad would take me to the movies, again, to see Harry Potter or, you know, something like, or any movie. And again, it was like the best weekend ever. I can't believe we're going to the movies. This is amazing. And I have some really, you know, fond moments of me and my parents going to the movies almost every weekend because I was like, can we see this movie, please, please, please? I was begging them to, like, we got to see this movie. And again, most of those movies were garbage. You know, a lot of like, kid movies that are very annoying. But my parents were, you know, two, again, two of my heroes that just, you know, always took us no matter what, whether it was Spongebob or I'm trying to think, uh, some really kiddie f- family movie. But again, that was like the best part of the weekends for me or the Fridays of going to the movies and just getting, you know, I was just so just mesmerized by everything. Um, and ever since then, I, you know, I would have like huge, you know, birthday parties, movie theme, you know, shout out to my parents for having these great birthday parties. All my friends went there, whether it was seeing Harry Potter, um, uh, seeing Looney Tunes, seeing like, DreamWorks animation, whatever, whatever it was, my parents threw these huge birthday parties for me, and it was mostly Harry Potter, and I would dress up in my full Harry Potter with the glasses, my mom would do a little scar on my head, I had a little fake wand, my Gryffindor coat, um, and it was just, like, again, it was an event for me, I was like, I can't believe seeing a movie today with my friends, and those birthdays were very special to me, because my parents went all out, all my friends were there, um, and again, Harry Potter is very dear to my heart, it's one of my favorite franchises, and... Again, it's seeing the magic of people fly on broomsticks, you know, magic elves, magic itself, wands, potions, spells, like, all of that to me was just getting mesmerizing, because I was just like, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing, and um, yeah, like I said, it was just, 
growing up, I had some of the best birthday parties uh, thanks to my parents. And it made me love e- movies even more because everyone was excited about the next Harry Potter or the next DreamWorks movie or the next whatever. And it was just fun sharing that experience with people like my parents, my friends, and my family. Uh, and again, I cherish those memories to this very day. So again, growing up in middle school, under school, I was the biggest movie nerd in my school. Like uh, everyone said, man, you see every movie every weekend. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I like doing. It was just to me, it was like, the, again, it was the experience of going to the movies, getting popcorn, getting a big drink, whether it's a big icy or a big lemonade that I look forward to that. And I think at that age, a lot of people didn't understand why I love movies so much. I mean, I explained to them why, but they were like, man, you see every movie, like, do you do other th- do you do other things? And of course, of course I did. I mean, who other kid can you know? I did sports. You know, I did a lot of things, fun trips with my family. You know, all that kind of stuff. But I was the movie guy growing up. And I remember in middle school, they're like, man, like all Doug does is go see movies. And I'm like, you're not wrong, but it's what I was passionate about. It was kind of like a hobby, going to the movies. You know, I was buying DVDs on you know with gift cards and stuff on the weekends at Target or Best Buy. Uh, back when physical media was still king. Um, before all, that stre- oh, before all the streaming stuff happened. So it was just, again, it was very important to me of like seeing a movie, watching DVDs, you know, going to Blockbuster, you know, again, Blockbuster to me, when my dad and my mom took us to Blockbuster um, on the weekends, again, it was so exciting. I was like, okay, we're going to see it, we're in a movie, we're going to watch this all weekend, I can't wait. And I must have rented Space Jam, uh, the original, and Spider Man 1 and 2 with Tobey Maguire so many times where. I should have just bought it at that point as a kid, and I would just watch it over and over again the entire weekend. Uh, when the weekend ended, going back to work, back, back to school, it was just kind of like, oh, man, the weekend's over, the fun's over. But I always look forward to either seeing a movie with my parents in theaters or going to Blockbuster and picking out a DVD or VHS because it got me so excited. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity for my parents because, you know, it just made me excited for whatever was coming out on DVD or in theaters, so... Super grateful for that. Yeah, and then in middle school, same thing. Movies, you know, I have my group of friends in high school, in middle school and high school too. Is just that we're all big movie guys. Like, if you wanted to find us, we were at uh, a pizza place in Chicago called Rosati's. It was downtown. It's now closed, unfortunately. That location we would just go to and can we get five bucks for a slice? And we would get five bucks for a slice, a drink, and go see a movie. And, you know, in eighth grade, especially in high school, is that I found my group of friends that love movies the way I did. You know, Avengers just came out. It blew us all away. You know, or Skyfall was coming out that year or next big movie. And to me, that was finding my people because we all share the same love for movies. And this is when movies were still like, in, this is Chicago for like 10, 11 bucks or go to matinee for six. It was still somewhat affordable. And this is now talking about 10 ish years ago. You know, the prices have changed. Inflation has changed. You know, tickets are as what they used to be in major markets like Chicago. So a bit more expensive now. But yeah, if you wanted to find me and my friends, it was, we were at the movies. We were at AMC River East 21 or AMC Lowe's, uh, North Michigan 9, all in Chicago. Uh, and we just, we love going there because we could joke around with friends, you know, see good, see good movies uh, or see big blockbusters like Avengers uh, uh, and movies like that because it was sharing the experience with them meant a lot to me. And I, you know, again, even in high school, I still had birthday parties of us hanging out with my friends. You know, my, I was I was the one kind of just like, Playing stuff with some friends, we're going to see Hunger Games, we're going to see this movie, whatever. And that was fun because they're all sharing the same experience as I did of like, you know, being together with a big group, seeing a huge movie like Hunger Games um, or Horrible Bosses um, or Star Wars because it was, it was just fun having that experience with them to like, you know, laugh, you know, make jokes. Yes, we probably were super disrupted to other, you know, moviegoers in the audience. And for that, we apologize. But it was just so fun, you know, cracking jokes with friends. And, you know, as the years went on, that group got smaller and smaller because, you know, it wasn't important to them anymore. You know, they were moving on from movies. You know, they're getting ready for college or they were moving away. So it just wasn't important. But, you know, I kept a good group of friends uh, that loved movies the way I did. And we would see everything. And in high school, too, I was lucky enough to, you know, get involved with advanced screenings, seeing movies early, going to, like, movies that came out, like, months before. And it was very cool because, you know, I saw movies that, People haven't seen yet, and it was like being the, the inside scoop at school. Yeah, I already saw this movie. I already saw X, Y, and Z, and that was fun going with friends because we all shared the same experience. Of, yeah, we saw the movie a month ago. It was great, and that to me, again, also a very fond memory of going to see movies months before out with friends and you know waiting in line an hour or two. Movies could be good, could be bad, uh, but it was just fu- it was just fun seeing them early with friends. And 
we saw, you know, I, remember, I remember seeing people like uh, Michael B. Jordan or uh, the cast of Trader Eye Compton or I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else did I see? Uh, yeah, uh, to my parents, the early screening premiere of Eddie the Eagle with Hugh Jackman and Taron Egerton. And it was just fun because Chicago was a big market and it was fun being around that market because they would bring celebrities or there'd be cool events to go see before anyone else. And again, it was kind of like I was known to know I was known to have a lot of the screening access with friends or whatever and family, so it was just fun uh, seeing movies early because again, you brag about it, bragging rights. Yeah, I already saw Creed. I already saw, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, Straight Outta Compton. I already saw Star Wars. And it was just having that experience was a lot of fun. So, but again, anyway, I'm kind of ahead of myself. I met Joel, one of the hosts, as you know, Joel Kindle, one of the hosts of the show. Uh, he's been one of my best friends since I was three years old. Uh, uh, we met during kind of like a not attention, but back in the day, if you misbehaved on the playground at our uh, elementary school, you got put on the wall. And if you're put on the wall, you're kind of like being shamed for your bad behavior. And I remember, I think it was in kindergarten or first grade, and I sent to the wall, and this dude, glasses and a, and a big Batman t-shirt, goes to the wall too. And then he goes, hi, I'm Joel. So, hi, I'm Doug. And so, you're a Batman fan? Because I love Batman. And we just kind of like hit it off. And yeah, to kids misbehaving and we you know became friends and man it's like almost going on 20 years 20 almost 20 years that i've i known joel and because he's one of those guys that has been my friend group ever since you know we would he would be movie guys whether the crew didn't want to see the movie or not we him and i would go to the movies on our own because we just love it made us feel bigger it made us like feel larger than life and again if the movie was good or it was bad it was the experience of seeing a movie with him and i on the big screen and it was kind of just like it just it was like a very cathartic, very um, fun moment to have, and we we just enjoyed the high, you know, again, better good. We had a funny commentary, joking, making jokes in the movie. Uh, if it was good, we were hyped. If it was bad, we were self hyped, but we, we were kind of making fun of it. And again, I love him for that. Again, one of my best friends to this day. Uh, and again, it, he's in Houston now. I'm in Phoenix, uh, so it just. We still talk about movie, as you know, we're on the show every week, and we'll still text, hey, have you seen this movie yet? Oh, I saw this movie on streaming, whatever, and we still kind of, like, keep each other updated with what we're seeing and what we haven't seen yet, what we're excited for, and, again, I call my brother, he's one of my, he's family to me, so when I had this idea to pitch the show, I was like, you know what, I want to bring three guys in, and one of them was Joel, and Joel goes, absolutely, man, you know, we, we commentary movies, we had commentary movies in high school all the time, this is the kind of just, like, putting it out there on Spotify for everyone to hear, so I'm like... Great. And again, like I said, I've known the guy 20 years and had some great screening moments with him too. You know, he's been out to Arizona visiting me a few times when we watch movies when he's visiting. So always a good time seeing him. Um, and then again, all through high school, love movies. And then I, uh, you know, I want to say sophomore year, I was like, you know what? I do want to study film in college. And I wrote to my parents about this. I had a professor at, at uh, sorry, a teacher at high school say, hey, if you want to study film, you should because you have a good eye for it. You know, if you want to like study it like, Critically, or when getting involved in entertainment, you should be like your, you know, your major. I was like, okay, that's that's cool. I mean, I thought about it, but I never thought it would be possible. And yeah, because I'm very grateful that you know my parents were very supportive of my dream, my passion. You know, I I first stories uh, as an adult or in college, like, oh, my parents will never let me do film or never let me do entertainment or arts in college. And day one, my parents were very, very, very supportive of my dream and my passion. They said, what, go for it. If you believe in this and you're passionate about this, go for it. And you should always study, always pursue what you're passionate about. And I love them for that. Uh, they got me so far in life, you know, it also in my career and my academics. So thank you, mom and dad, for, you know, believing in my dream, believing in my passion, you know. Again, being those parents that took me to the movies every weekend, took me to Blockbuster every weekend, because without you guys, this wouldn't have happened. This, this dream couldn't have happened, or I, I wouldn't be pursuing my dream right now. So thank you, mom and dad. Um, yeah, anyway, so... I wanted to went into film school. I had in my mind on UCLA, you know, one of the best film schools in in, uh, in the world. You know, UCLA, UC, USC, and NYU are the three best film schools. Um, and I was like, all right, well, I could, I could be an option. And I was looking at film schools, like who are the best one uh, was in Chicago. And um, you know, my dad was offered a job out here in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and I was like, okay. Let's look at schools out here, and I was like, oh, I, I have my mind. I want to, I want to go to, yeah, I want to go to uh, LA for film school. And this is again, yeah, this is 2015, 2014. I didn't know how expensive college. I, mean, I knew it was expensive. I didn't know how expensive it was. You know how expensive living in California or schools in California were because, as we all know, going to going to college isn't cheap, but going to school in California is very, very expensive. So I was like, oh, we're gonna, 
we get into it more. And we took a, we took a family trip to visit uh, Arizona in 2015. And I was just like, oh my god, like this place is pretty cool. And I went to my first tour of schools. I mean, I was touring schools in uh, Chicago already, whether it was you know uh, DePaul, Loyola, Columbia. I had a few trips to schools in Michigan, but I wasn't really getting the same vibe. And I we came to Arizona for for his you know for a family trip to like young consider moving to moving to Phoenix. And the first trip on the first school I went to on my on the on the Arizona trip was uh, Arizona State University. Uh, it go ACU, go Devils. And the moment I, I hit campus, I'm like, this is my home. Like you, you, that's a weird feeling of you, you know when you get to a place or you know when you get a car or get an apartment or something, you just know like this place is this is meant for you. And I remember going to ACU for the first time. I'm like, I love it. Like it was just like it was so vibrant. It was just everyone was fr- super friendly. I love the campus. And I remember meeting people in the film school, and they said, "Hey, listen, we're a small film school. We're just we're just kind of starting out, but you know, we have professors who worked in the industry, worked in entertainment, worked in you know on sets and TV and movies and Broadway, all that stuff." And and the guy I was talking to, you just said, "Give us a chance. You know, again, we're small, but we're growing." And this was back April 2015, and I'm like, "All right." And it very stuck with me because the guy I was talking to was very passionate. He was like, "Yeah, you know, listen, like we're we're growing." And that really kind of put me, like, in perspective of, like, wow, you know, they're small, but it's very hands-on, you know, I get to one-on-one with professors and crew, and, you know, for short films and student films, I'm like, all right, that's awesome. But I still had California in my mind for going to film school. Went to uh, U of A in Tucson, went to NAU, uh, AC was in my head the entire time, I'm like, you know, the guy said it just stuck with me, he goes, no, we're small, but we're hands-on, and you get to learn more, you get to be interactive more with your professors, and, you know, the curriculum, and, you know, the you know, the short films, the student films we have out here, I'm like, all right, that stuck with me. Like I said, so like California on my mind, but I was really digging ASU, and lucky enough, my my dad was transferred out here uh, in Phoenix uh, my uh, after my senior year of high school, so I, again, still applying to all the, all the film schools, I got into all the schools I applied for, and after a lot of consideration, ASU, uh, Arizona State was the one. I just, I loved the vibe, I loved being there. Uh, I was very excited about, you know, meeting new people, having professors that were working in the entertainment industry, and again, I was being close to my parents, which was nice. Again, but I didn't go to I didn't go to ASU because I followed them or they followed me. It was perfect timing that we both came to Arizona at the same time, and it was again, it's been, it's been a blessing ever since. So, again, finished high school in 2016. It's about all my friends, um, and I could, I remember the last. Night I was in Chicago before I moved to Arizona was uh, went to a free screening went to an early screening of a movie called Mike and Dave Meet Wedding Dates and yes people hate that movie but I had so much fun watching that movie it's one of my guilty pleasures I remember seeing it with all my friends my last night being in Chicago and we're just laughing having one good last laugh one good one good last movie experience together and for that I cherish that I cherish that movie for that reason yes it has its issues I'm the best movie in the world but it means a lot to me because it was uh, the, my kind of like final goodbye of seeing a movie with my friends so. Moved to Arizona in 2016. Uh, again, film school, Herberger. Again, don't go Devils. Uh, very nervous, meeting new people for the first time. And uh, the first week of school, I met this kid named Moses. And people were like, oh, you, you met Moses? Yeah, I'm like, no, I haven't met him yet. And I remember people in my dorm were like, oh, he's super funny. He's very charming. I'm like, all right, I'll meet him. Never met him. And I was going to class one day. We had this, <laughs> it was my first class of my semester, first year of college. It was an 8 a.m. art class that was required by all film acting, drama, whatever, uh, majors take this class. I'm like, well, I'm thinking the 8 a.m. art class on a Monday. I'm like, come on now. And I was lost looking for this class. And this kid was like, hey, looking for, looking for art art 101, whatever. I'm like, yeah. I'm, and I'm like, hey, I'm Doug. He's like, I'm Moses. No, you know, so he goes, what's up, man? My name is Ugg. And I'm like, what? Because I'm just playing bro, I'm Moses. You know, we you know shook hands and everything. I'm like, oh, this kid's, this kid has jokes. He's funny. And he was, again, yeah, one of my first kind of friends in class. I really vibed with him. We got along really well. And my first project in college was a terrible one, but he was in the group with me. And it was just fun getting to know him, who, who he was. He's, again, he's a jokester. He's very funny. He's, very, very, he's, great, he's, a great, he's a great eye for storytelling. You know, why love, he also loves movies, too. Big movie head like I am. And, yeah, we just kind of clicked right away. And even though we had an awful project together, we still had fun, you know, getting to know each other, you know, learning more about him. Um, and then the week after, I was going to this kind of like small group, a class that was required by all first years in college to 
meet our professor, meet the class, whatever. And sure enough, it was uh, Mr. Nick Johnson, one of the co-hosts of the show. And he's like, hey, look, look for this class. Me, I look for this class, too, because oh, I'm Dick. It's like, oh, I'm Doug. And we just kind of hit it off. We're talking about, like, movies coming out, you know, what he just saw, what I'm just seeing. And, you know, I met Nick second week of school, but I didn't really get to know him more until maybe second semester of of my freshman year of college because, you know, we had, I did for friend groups at the time. I was kind of like, you know, new to Arizona. I was kind of like seeing everything, meeting new people. I was partying a lot. So I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't see Nick as much as I wanted to, but uh, down the road, we had more classes together. And I remember through a mutual friend we met. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? I haven't talked to him in a while, but we clicked. And I remember, again, second semester, February of uh, my freshman year that Nick, myself, and two other guys became really close and, uh, Nick and I just you know, talk about movies and we want, we want to write stuff for a while and we get these really good long conversations about why we want to direct and write and stuff like that and I bonded with him and he bonded with me and it was getting a very beautiful experience because we had so many similar ideas you know we were making jokes here and there with a group of friends we were at we were with at the time so um, he's been I, Moses and Nick have been in my life since my first week of first month of college you know, again both both from Arizona both local boys and they made me feel very at home that these guys knew the area. They knew, they get also loved movies the way I did. It was just very like reassuring because again, I going to going to film school. You know, everyone loves movies, but when you love movies more than anything in the world, and you share that experience with two other people, it's very it's very relaxing. But also, it's very like uplifting. Like, oh wow, these guys love the same movies that I do. We we can, we can like see things together. See, we see all these movies together, and yeah, for that I love that. It was again, I love those guys to death. And two of my brothers, two of my closest friends to this day. So when I was pitching the show to them, I was like, well, I, these are the last two guys I need on the show was Nick and Moses because then they have a similar eye of, you know, entertainment. They have a similar eye of storytelling. We all kind of like the same things, you know. Uh, and, and all throughout college, we just, Nick, Moses, myself, and other friends at the time, we would see everything, opening night, whether it was Avengers, whether it was Black Panther or, you know, Mission Impossible, whatever it was, we would see opening night or went to screenings together in college because I, I saw my screenings in Arizona, go see movies early, either through school or through my own connections. And bringing them along was fun because we all again make jokes, laugh. We would, you know, appreciate the movie for what it was. And if the movie was bad too, we would still appreciate it. But all throughout college, that was us. We would write together. We would we would produce together. We would, you know, write stories together. You talk about our dreams and entertainment, going to Hollywood, all that kind of stuff. So Nick and Moses were big essential for me getting on getting them on the show. And you know, you hear Moses on the show here sometime uh, for some context. You know, he. Uh, he lives in LA now. He's a he's a PA on multiple projects, whether it was the Oscars, um, some TV series here and there. He's a PA on a lot of the big award shows, uh, also the Super Bowl. So he's always very very busy. But I know he'll be hopping on soon whenever he can. And he, Moses is a very good dude, great director. If you can see his movie Gold, which I produced in college, the short film on Amazon, it's really really good. Um, you know, Moses is a very good director. He has such vulnerability and he brings so much you know emotion to his projects and it makes him a great you know director because he has his again certain eye for storytelling and again also he all his love goes into everything he does whether he's writing something producing something acting in it uh directing in it he puts all his love into whatever he does and he's such a great filmmaker and i know he's, I know he's in post-production of his other short film right now which i can't wait to see great script uh, but if you watch Golds on Amazon Prime, it's a great film. Again, it was his senior project. He put so much blood, sweat, and tears into that, into that movie, and it turned out great. And I'm really happy to be part of it. And you know, lucky that I get to produce it with him because again, it's a great short film. Um, and yeah, so again, again, like I said, those guys were crucial to me in college. Again, those were my those were my boys, my movie crew. We all lived together. We all lived near each other, or we all lived kind of the same. The same apartment uh, complex for multiple years, and like I said, it was just a very, very beautiful experience to share that you know those years with them. Um, you know, I did my own thing for a while, so you know, uh, for more context, going to Arizona State, I did a two inter- two internships in LA. I did a, I did a semester abroad in London at University of London, as well as like a fellowship, which kind of like an internship in London uh, through the British British Film Institute as like a study abroad student through a professor of mine. I get to learn about like how films and TV shows are made and, and through the BFI, you know, how different it is, how different and similar it is to, you know, us filming stuff in America. Beautiful experience. I uh, just loved everything about it. And then I came back from London, got an internship with an independent producer uh, remotely in LA. 
learned so much about script coverage, script writing, development, production, pre-production. And that's what my main, my focus in school was majoring was in film production, film and TV production. But my focus was in screenwriting, pre-production, development. So I love telling stories. I love telling. I love writing stuff. I love writing characters and different dialogue. It brings me so much joy. So that was my focus. I focused a lot in college. And then having an internship at that was great. Came back to my senior year, internship. I was getting enjoying my last again, it's all before COVID, all before COVID kind of changed everything. And I remember uh, talking to my professor about, hey, and my professor, again, I had three great professors in college that I, uh, through at ASU that I will cherish forever. I learned so much from them because they told me all, all about storytelling, writing, producing, uh, you know, development, you know, tell, you know sticking, uh, the, the ability to tell stories in your own vision, in your own way. And that's a lesson that I'll forever be grateful for because I've learned so much from all three of them. Uh, both Professor Collis, uh, Professor Mede, and Professor Bernstein, three guys who I really uh, look up to. Um, and so he said, hey, Doug, my, Professor Collis said, hey, Doug, you know, this is, I'm, I know I know one of the founder, I know one of the heads at this uh, production company, uh, an independent movie studio in LA. Do you want to be up for the, up for the internship? That it will. Let me think about it. Again, I just came back off of being studying abroad. I just finished my internship. I'm kind of just like, want to enjoy my senior year. And, you know, talking to my parents, talking to myself, and my parents were like, you know, you know, it's this is a good opportunity because you know you're up, you're on you're on the very high right now. You're you're off of a study abroad, uh, a fellowship with the British Film Institute, as well as internship through a producer. You got to ride that wave. And I said, yeah, no, but I want to join my senior again. Like I said all before COVID, before we knew the world's gonna shut down. I was like, I want to join my. This is August 2019. I wanted to enjoy my senior year for what it was. See my friends, in, you know, party a little bit, enjoy my last you know last full year. And my parents said, okay, but again, you got you really have to capitalize on your moment now. You're doing really great. This would be another great opportunity for you to have another internship on your resume. Just think about it. I thought about it a little while and I was still teetering. I was like, well, I wanna do I wanna do both. I wanna do, I wanna like enjoy my year, also intern and just I don't I don't know. And I remember going to so I had a kind of like a sort of interview with one of the recruit one of like the internship coordinators. Went well. Did, did a uh, went to a mixer through ASU with some friends uh, at ASU uh, in LA. Met same met the same internship recruiter, uh, sorry internship coordinator. And that worked a lot. And I said, oh, well, I can see myself doing this internship. Okay, again, this is end of September 2019. Came back, uh, and I said, all right, well, let's yeah, what's 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 go, let's go for it and. I remember I had an interview with that and with a great again. This was at Mar Vista Entertainment. I love working for them. Now they actually they're a part of Fox Entertainment, which is a great acquire. They I have so much respect for everyone at Mar Vista Entertainment. I learned so much from them, um, and because everyone was so so welcoming and so nice and very again willing to teach me stuff, willing to have me like shadow meetings and development meetings and produce, producing meetings and you know script meetings and just I learned so much just those few months being there and. I said, all right, let's do it. So I had the, had the, had the interview with them, and um, my boss, who came, Chanel, was like, hey, we'll, we'll, see, you, we'll see you in January. And I said, oh, okay, I got it. And I was like, wow, this is my third internship. This is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy. Call my parents, call my friends. I got it. We're going to the internship. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You're going to L.A. It's huge. And I was getting yeah, moving to L.A. for my last semester of college. So I still have my, you know, last, my fall semester at ASU, you know, enjoying, still partying, you know, just you know, going to school, playing softball. It was just Kind of like a farewell in a way. Like, you know, I'll, I'll be coming back to graduate after the internship in May. So, we, so, we, so we thought. You know, I said before COVID, and I was very nervous, but also very excited because you know this is me going to another going to another city that is in my home. A year later, you know, I was in London, sp- spring of 2019, from from December to end of April. Now I'm going to. LA from end of December to early May. And it's still, again, I'm not, I'm not near my friends anymore. I'm not near my family. It's going to be different. And like I said, my parents were very supportive. They said, we're, we're going to get you there. We're going to find housing. And luckily I found housing through Arizona state, super helpful. And it was, a, it was a new part of my journey. Like, wow, I'm really on my high now. I have great, I have an internship, a fellowship, study abroad on my resume. This is great. Let's do it. And it was, it was sad saying goodbye to, to ASU. And like I said, it just, it was like, I didn't know this would be the last time being in my class with all my friends before the pandemic. So it was just like, all right, I, I was appreciating it for what it was, but it was still very like, oh, is this is happening. Did, I, did an internship in 
uh, LA from end of December to mid March. I met so many great people. I networked all the time, uh, with a lot of premieres, went to a lot of early screenings. Uh, so much fun. Met so many people. COVID hit. I said, all right, well, I'll do my, what's my internship at home? Uh, in, in, in Arizona, I moved, I moved back to my parents' house in Arizona. I was like, all right, let's, let's finish it up. I finished my last semester of college all online and I finished all my, my, last, my, inter- my last my internship all online on Zoom. So it was a very weird experience, but I'm grateful for what I've learned through my internships as well as as uh, you know, you know, as co- in, uh, in college. So it was just very weird how it all ended, but I got to uh, – my senior project was a script that I'm still writing, actually. It was a series. It was a pilot I wrote about – you know, life in college and life after college was, you know, that weird time between graduate, graduate college graduation and the and getting your first job. And I'm very proud of that script to this day. I'm still developing it right now with myself and with Nick. It's a story I'm very passionate about, I'm very proud of. And then, you know, when COVID hit, it was to me, I was, I, the plan was to move to LA once things got better, but with COVID being you know, delaying everything, I was applying for jobs everywhere. I was applying to literally any job in entertainment, jobs that weren't entertainment, and no one was hiring. And I was still writing. I was still developing stuff. And I was listening to a lot of podcasts and podcasts like uh, The Collider Live, uh, The Big Thing with Christian Harloff, Double Toasted, Films at Home, John Campia. And I would watch these shows over and over again, watch every, every week because it was entertainment because the entertainment was being shut down. We were watching a lot of new movies or TV shows. So I was listening. To, I was listening to more podcasts of like what people were up to during the pandemic. You know what they were commentating on, and to me, it was finding a different source of entertainment. I was a big podcast person before, uh, you know, before the pandemic. But thanks to COVID, I was investing my time in a lot more shows, learning more about host and podcasting, producing a show on on YouTube or on Spotify, or whatever. So or again, Joe Rogan, uh, those kind of shows where I was like, wow, I'm learning so much of like just like. You know, podcasts is just you know talking about what you're passionate about. You know, what what do you love? Like, why are you doing this? Be having people having people on that for the same you know enthusiasm and appreciation as you do. So I was like, this is kind of easy. Again, this was now three years ago. I just didn't think of doing one. I just was so enthralled by. It. I was so amused by this. So I was like, all right, I'll just keep listening to new episodes every week. And I was you know, very interested in the idea of podcasting and what the, what the world was. Um, couldn't find a job still. It took me a while, uh, ups and downs during the pandemic. And I was able to find a job, um, through a visual effects company, a previous company in, in LA, uh, learned a lot, but the job wasn't for my, for me. Uh, the, my job, the job kind of ended. It was all contract work. So it ended. And I, uh, was, uh, unemployed again. I was still writing. I was listening to more podcasts, but it's, uh, job, job didn't work out. So I was looking for other jobs, looking for other stuff. And, Luckily, I got a job uh, months later uh, 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 with Paramount and uh, Pluto TV, where it was all post production. It was content production, learning about what goes on what, whether it was on Paramount Plus or Pluto or the stuff itself. And I' grateful for the opportunity because I learned so much from. I, I still learn so much from them, and I had a great group of people. That it was kind of like my first real job out of college when I was, again I was still writing, I was still producing. So producing you know, scripts and friends, whatever here and there, but it was my first you know adult job in entertainment. And around that time, I said, you know what? What about doing my own podcast on the side? This is again, this is fall twenty twenty one. Had the idea, and this is where listeners, I always had the name the genre of your life in my head. I just didn't know what the show was. So I, I have a name for the podcast. Let's do the genre of your life. And it was gonna be let's talk about movies and everything. And at the time, I was looking to podcast production. I was like, "Oh, this is kind of expensive. You know, it, you, you need a good mic, you need good equipment, you need a good hosting, you need to like pay to be get and pay to host your show on certain sites." I was like, "Oh, this is a lot." I was kind of just like a little overwhelmed. I was like, "What? I'll just put on ice for now." But it was still back in my head, and I was like, "What? Well, I do want to do a podcast eventually, but when will be the right time?" Just kidding. Still watch shows like Double Toasted and John Campia, Films at Home, uh, The Big Thing, and. It just still it was it was inspiring me to my own things. I could relate to all these shows I was listening to because it was all about the love for movies, you know, film criticism, film reviews, TV reviews, streaming, entertainment updates. And I was like, well, I could do this myself, but I just still never thought about it. And all 2022, I was kind of in between jobs. I was going from company to company. I worked for companies like again Paramount, Netflix, Fox Entertainment, Universal, back at Paramount. So it was just finding my groove again but i was going to different jobs that were 
either the contracts were ending or, you know, things, things were, things were changing left and right. And again, it, that's the business, you know, nothing's set in stone. It's a show. It's not show friends called show business. It's all about the ups and downs of it all. Uh, things change left and right. It's, it's, the, it's the ever growing experience of being involved in the entertainment industry. And about, I want to say around last, last summer, early, early fall of 2022, I said, you know what? Let's do this podcast. I think I'm ready enough. I think I have enough now knowledge. I think I know, the ins and outs of you know what makes a good podcast, and yeah, like I said, from there I had the idea, I made the little logo, and I said, "Oh, I'm gonna, let me pitch a show to my three great friends, which were Joel, Nick, and Moses." And I was like, "Let's do it, guys! Let's do it! I'm I'm very I'm very confident in this." And luckily, all three of them were like, "Let's do it, man! We're with you. It's, it's gonna be fun. We all love movies, love entertainment. It's this is the show." And I'm super grateful they all said yes. Um, if they said no, I I, I totally would have gotten it. Yeah, listen, I get it. The show must go on. I'll find someone else. I'll do it myself. But they all said yes, uh, luckily. And again, we host the show every week. So, and that's when I was like, you know what? Let's 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 just do this. Let's let's put a show out. And it was a lot of a lot of development. It's like, okay, what's, what's the show going to be about? You know, what's going to be the flow of the show? And as you probably hear now, we're still we're 12, 12 episodes in. We're still figuring out the flow of the show. I'm still learning how to edit the show. I'm still learning how to like market the show. And it's it's a, I think it's an ongoing process of. You're always learning about your show itself, what your show is. It's always you're always evolving. You're always evolving as a host. The show's always evolving of itself. Uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm learning more about editing, learning more about sound production and comp- sound compression and so- sound normal uh, normalization and you know, certain uh, intro music, outro music, where you can find the show, stuff like that. So, as you might hear, like I said, we're st- we're still learning as we're going, but we are very proud that we're 12 episodes in and we're starting to find the flow of the show to a degree and having Nick on for now, then he, as you, as you already know, he hops off to you for his warm milk and cookies and he goes to bed because he's a work, he's a long working man. And we're, you know, when Moses hops on, he'll hop on. We have guests to hop on for a little while. And just, I want this, I wanted this show to be just a couple of friends talking about movies, what we're seeing, what we're reviewing, you know, what, Movies that we're, we're going to review on the show, what we just saw recently, are, are we going to screenings? What movies that we seen at the early screenings? We talk about. We're becoming more film critics, which is great because I wanted, to, I want to, be, I want to focus a lot more on film reviews, TV reviews, as well as updates. But I also want to find, I also want to talk about you know genres that make us you know excited, you know movies that make us excited, you know what kind of filmmakers are we paying attention more to you know who, who's exciting as a director whether it's jordan peele chris nolan spike lee Denis villeneuve greta gerwig um you know directors like that where it's like where they're like, that inspire us as aspiring filmmakers and who we appreciate seeing their movies on the big screen and as you guys already heard in the sh- multiple show- episodes of the show is that we're very big on theatrical nothing wrong with streaming nothing wrong with you know the next hulu or next netflix show but we are very pro theatrical because, to again, as I said at the beginning of this show, of this episode, where I think the theatrical experience is a very, very important for the business, and it's also a very big communal experience. Seeing a movie on a big screen with, with strangers, whether you're laughing, whether you're scared, whether you're clapping at Iron Man or Black Panther or Spider Man, whatever, whatever they just did, it just sharing that experience is very, very important for the entertainment industry. And why we love movies, and why we go to the movies, because you—it's it's an escape, but also it's just—it's being immersed. You're—it's very immersive. You're—you're you're in this new world for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, or whatever, and it's kind of like you're in this space that you can like turn off the outside world and enjoy what's on the screen, no matter what the genre is, because it makes you feel larger than life, which is how I feel to this very day. I'm 25 years old. I feel the exact same way how I felt when I saw SpongeBob SquarePants the movie when I was six or seven, five or six, whatever. So. It's still a very important experience. Again, I think streaming has done a lot for upcoming filmmakers, uh, upcoming you know directors, writers, actors. It's a huge plus, but I do feel like the right way to see a movie is on the big screen, whether it's a standard screen, Dolby, IMAX, Prime, 40X, whatever. It's the it's Cine Capri. It's the importance of being on a, being on a movie, being see, seeing a movie together, and seeing in a movie that again makes you like. This smile, it makes you realize why you love movies too. So I'm happy that, you know, post pandemic, we're seeing the return of big movies or movies in general, whether it's Top Gun, whether a movie like Smile or Barbarian or No Way Home uh, or a movie called Air or whatever. We're seeing the return of theatrical experiences because people believe in going back to the movies because seeing movies in theaters also helps people, also helps streamers because 
oh, I love seeing Top Gun on theaters. We're going to watch it now. We can watch it on Prime, on Paramount Plus, Big Plus. Great. Awesome. Oh, I love seeing Wakanda Forever. I love seeing Spider-Man No Way Home. We're going to watch it. Oh, Disney Plus. Great. I'll get Disney Plus down because I, I, I can see that movie on there. And it's really, it's a big, they go hand in hand, which I think is, a, I think what we're realizing more and more is that they're meant to be on the big screen because it helps the streaming and, you know, the other companies down the road when it comes to VOD and on demand. Um, so yeah, it's good. we're both big, very big pro theatrical uh, on the show. So, like I said, it to, this show really was about just four four movie lovers, four entertainment uh, enthusiasts, people who you know, three of us who worked in the industry. Uh, and why you know, and Joel's kind of the outsider because he's a big he, he'll write stuff with me all the time, but. Having me, Nick, and Joel, I me, mean, Nick, and Moses have all had experience in entertainment. Like I said, Nick, uh, sorry, Moses is in LA now, work a PA on these huge projects. So we're learning from him. I know I'm doing stuff for my own right now. We're learning stuff like that, where I'm learning all my own stuff through work. So it's just, we're all, we all have, we all have similar experiences, but we're all different. And that what makes the show so unique is that we're bringing our similarities and differences to the show together. Whether it's disagreeing on a movie or disagreeing on this show or movie, or whatever, just, it's the beauty of film because it's all, it's all subjective and we can all have different opinions on. What we're watching, whether it's a show you didn't like or a movie you didn't like, it's just we're sharing that we're still sharing that experience together. And yeah, like I said, I'm I'm very proud of the show what we have so far, and we continue to grow. We want more people to listen to the show. We want to market the show better. So like I said, when you review, when you give us a rating on the show, when you spread the word about us, whether it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, MySpace, Friendster, whatever, it it help it helps the sh- it helps the show so much. And it, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, it helps the show a lot. So. Like I said, bear, again, like I said, we're still learning as, as we're going, but I, I am very proud of the show, what it is so far. So, yeah, like I said, it's I, I'm i very grateful that all everyone has hopped on the show. And like I said, half of that, we have two great guests so far. We, we want to get more guests on the show. I think Ray's going to come back on the show in a few weeks. And again, we're, we're learning, we're, it's, which is awesome. And I, I have people that I went to film school with that want, want, want to be on the show. I have friends that from back home in Chicago that want that are listeners that want to be on the show to talk about movies with us. So it's just, we're just all, we're just all friends or peers that share the same love for movies and TV and entertainment. Um, so yeah. So again, as every week, we're going to talk about stuff. We're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about TV. We're going to talk about who said what or what's coming to streaming and oh the new reboot happening uh, it's 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 we're so we're so gi- so giddy about it and that's what the show is we're we're sharing our enthusiasm with you um and like i said i'm very proud of what we have accomplished so far and what, what we're about to accomplish down the road um i think i'm going to end on this so everyone might ask hey you know you're a fil- you're a film you're a film major you work in entertainment what is your top 10 movies of all time so then on this, I will give you my top ten of all time, and I will start right. Put my list up, and if you're on Letterbox, uh, definitely follow me on Letterbox. I post all my like kind of like what I'm watching and watch list on there. Uh, where is my list now? Scrolling, scrolling. You know, you would think it would be pinned. Ah, here it is. All right, top 10 of all time, starting with number one. Back to the Future, the original. Uh, Like I said, that movie meant so much to me. It's why I love movies, why I love TV. Uh, Two is Richard Linklater's masterpiece, which is, to me, Daisy Confused. Which I love everything about that movie. I own the book about it. I, I Link later inspires me to become a as a to become a writer when I was in college. Uh, all his movies just make me just feel happy and just it's the idea, it's the exploration of who people are. You know, them finding themselves, they're finding their voice, they're finding you know who they want to be friends with. It's, I love his movies for that. Uh, number three is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Notice the original. It's great. But I remember seeing Blade Runner 2049 in IMAX with Nick and some other friends at the time. Opening night IMAX, and that just blew me away. It was kind of like seeing the Dark Knight in IMAX for the first time. It just, it just blew me away. I was like, I, I'm speechless. It just, I, just, I can't believe what I just saw. I, just, I think Denis Villeneuve was just a genius. He was one of my favorite filmmakers. Just to, Again, he makes all his movies, whether it's Prisoner, Sicario, uh, Rival, uh, Enemy. Again, Blade Runner 2049, Dune. 
he makes these movies which is such um, such awe. And you're like, how is he doing this? And I th- again, it's just again to this day, I'm just mesmerized by that movie. Um, Goodfellas, which is again a Martin Scorsese classic. Uh, I think Ray Liotta, De Niro, Pesci, that movie are just they're king, they're legends of that movie. And that the pacing of that movie, the writing of the movie, everything works on all on all on all terms. It just you watch, I can watch it all the time. Never get all of it. I can watch it on TV or TBS, whatever, or it's on where it's on streaming. Or I, I own, I still own it on DVD, or Blu-ray. I just get, I can watch it. I just never get sold. Uh, five is the Truman Show, which to me, a movie that makes you feel larger than life as well. Uh, Jim Carrey's performance that is just so, so it's so vulnerable, but also it's so just like it has so it has so many layers to it, and it's a show, movie all about kind of self discovery, like how well do you know yourself, and you know you feel like a was it a small fish in a big pond? That's just the beauty of it's like you know, again it's, all, it's also a love letter to Holly to TV to entertainment and love and uh, movie making and you know we're just so we are we are we are still in awe of the real world but it just it, that movie to me just it's Jim Carrey's best performance it's one of the best scripts ever if you ask me so yeah I get great movie um, number six to me is uh, also another Richard Linklater movie which is. Uh, Everybody wants some, which was kind of quote the spirit, the spiritual sequel to Days and Confused. The, when people say they saw a movie or a show at the right time, to me, this is that movie of hitting me at the right time. I was I was literally moving to Arizona. I was on the flight to Arizona, and I downloaded it on iTunes with my friends. So my friends like, oh yeah, watch this movie, man. You're gonna love it. It's so good. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give it a chance. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Days and Confused, but a sequel, whatever, quote unquote sequel. I'll watch it. I remember watching it on my iPad on the plane to Arizona when I moved to Arizona, and I said, "I love this movie." I, first time I met, I meant I love this movie because it was it hit me because it's about you know days confused with the seventies. Everybody wants them is the eighties, and you know I'm not a, I'm not a kid of that generation whatsoever, but it's about this kid who, this guy who was starting his freshman year of high school of college of college. He's moving to a new town. He's moving to a new place in Texas. He's on the baseball team. I played baseball all throughout high school and middle school and grade school. Uh, again, former baseball player talking here. And, you know, he's meeting new people. He's experienced college partying. He's got, you know, experienced college drinking, smoking, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, wow, I'm about to be a college freshman in less than two months. Like this movie's speaking to me. And just, again, it hit me on, it literally, it's like, it's the perfect timing for me to watch this movie because I can relate to this all too well. Of just being kind of an outsider in a, in a new in a new environment, so I love, love that movie for what it for what that is. And I say it's a quote unquote spiritual sequel. Days and Confused. It's very similar. A lot of the same kind of tropes, uh, but it's super underrated. When that movie came out, no one saw it, and I I'm mad at myself for this day for not seeing that in theaters because I think I would I would have loved it in theaters even more. Uh, it came out April 2016. There was no marketing to it. It just kind of just came and went. But if you can watch it, I highly recommend this movie. It just, it's so funny. It has so much heart, it has so much charm, and it just it it just works. Number seven, funny enough, is Raising Arizona. I remember watching this uh, in film class in high school a week before visiting Arizona for the first time, and I was just like, "This movie's fantastic. The humor works. Uh, Nick Cage is is so also very charming. You know, he's 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 a, he's a he's a he's a crook. He's a you know he's a he's a criminal, but." You root for him because he just—he's very charming. He's so—he's like a very, very lovable, he's a very lovable idiot, and he's trying to do right, even though he can't can't escape his you know criminal past. And like I said, it just—it really does work. And it's—I'm not a huge Coen Brothers fan, but that to me is their masterpiece because it's the humor is so funny. It's very cartoonish. It's very kind of like Wiley like Wiley Coyote, Looney Tunes in a way, but it's. It's it works and it, Nicolas Cage performance in that is just genius and yeah if you're raising Arizona man it's it's a it's really a perfect movie too because it's Holly Hunter's great in it as well John Goodman's great in it and it's very silly but you fall in love with it in the first ten minutes of the movie what it is and you go okay now I see what it is uh, eight is Training Day I think this is Denzel's best performance this was Anton Fuqua's like first major movie as a filmmaker. Uh, written by David Ayer, who I have so much appreciation for as a filmmaker and writer, I think he's very underrated. Um, but yeah, this is, Denz- this is Denzel's like this is Denzel's creme of the creme. Like this is this is his uh, Mount Rushmore moment as an actor, meaning that every he steals the movie. He's his charisma, his charm. Yes, he's playing a scumbag uh, detective, 
but you're just so as a, again but as 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 a performance you're mesmerized by what he's doing you're like wow he's bringing so much to this character yeah there's been so many crime you know cop you know training day kind of movies but this one just sets a stone it's kind of elevated him as an actor of like well look what I can do look what I can do I I can even top this and he just you're just yeah, Ethan Hawke's great in that movie too Ethan Hawke plays a like, Ethan Hawke does a good job of playing off of Denzel in a hard way because you know, Denzel is really he's he's giving his all. This is top of his game, Denzel. It's still top of his game, if you ask me. But he just he's just you're watching this you're watching this actor just do so much. Whether it's he's you know he's charming at one moment, you know he's he's evil at another moment. You know is he good? Is he bad? And you no, know, he he he's playing a crooked cop. But you're just you're just so. Glued to the screen, watching his performance, you're like, "Wow! Like, it's how is he? How is he doing this?" And I think again, he's the goat. He's one of the best actors of all time. But that movie to me, just it's you watch here, and it, again, I can watch it all the time. Never go again. The movie's almost over twenty years old. You you pick up new things each time, and you're just again great soundtrack. But I also show how Anton Fuqua can make such great, grounded, gritty dramas. That feel, like I said before, larger than larger than life, and you're he, he just he he's a great storyteller when it comes to working with Denzel or telling these really action action gritty stories that make you feel like whoa, like I want to see what more he can do. Number nine, uh, for our listeners, I I am a huge Tarantino fan. He's one of my favorite filmmakers. Um, I love everything he does, uh, whether it's Django Unchained, which is my my, 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 my ninth movie, funny enough, whether it's Glorious Bastards, Pulp Fiction, uh, everything. Again, again uh, Jackie Brown, Reservoir Dogs, Kill Bill, everything. And to I remember I, my first tangent I ever saw, it, this made me a little biased towards one, was Django Unchained. I remember watching it on my iPad. It was I tried sneaking into the movie with my friends when we were in high school and the, you know, the theater, the ushers kicked us out because they knew we, we weren't old enough to see it. I remember watching it on an iPad when, during the Oscar season, I was just like, whoa, like, because it was different to me of what of I've seen before. It was violent. It was really, it's, it's super dark, but it's also very funny and it's very, again, Jimmy Fox is one of my favorite actors. And you're just like, wow. He, similar to how Denzel did in Training Day, is Jimmy Fox has a really charisma to it. He has this very like presence that's very, that's very demanding. That's very, you know, just like, very front and you're like whoa and then him working playing off of Christoph Waltz and Leonardo DiCaprio and Sam Jackson everyone brings their A game when it comes to Tarantino movie but the story of uh, you now he's a slave turned bounty hunter and it's like how you know goes, goes on revenge and it just he makes he makes Jamie Foxx an unconventional hero but Jamie Foxx really owns the performance you know the, it, a lot of his dia- a lot of dialogue has gone to Christoph Waltz or Little Caprio, but Jimmy Fox is just, he's bringing this very kind of vulnerability, but also just this very powerful performance to him. And I think it's really one of his, I think, I think Santino's best movie, if you ask me. And you're, and you're just, the violence, the soundtrack, it just, it's whoa. It's very, very, it's, to me, what I saw at that time when I was 15, 16 years, 16 years, I was like 15, no, 15 years old. I was like, whoa, I have never seen a movie like this before. Who is this guy? And I was just like, from then I was like, I'm a huge Tarantino fan. I'm gonna watch all his movies. And I did. I watched the thing from Pulp Fiction, The Reservoir Dogs, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill, and I was like, whoa, like this is this is amazing. This is insane. So that's number nine. And number ten, also same uh, year after was Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I read the book first actually. I mean, the book is wild, and the movie is also very wild, as people know. But I was like, I want to read the book first. I want to know more of the story. So I didn't say it's in theaters either. I waited I waited until it came on uh, streaming or on iTunes, whatever. I read the book and I said, whoa, this is heavy. This is this is true, quote unquote, question mark. No way this all happened. And yes, the Martin Scorsese version, well, the movie that we see is very, very fictionalized. It's very Hollywood. It's, you know, they take their creative liberties for sure. But for a adapt, adaption of the book, it's very... It's faithful to a degree, but they think the liberties for sure with this movie. And but I remember seeing that on on iPad, and I was like, I would have loved seeing this on the, on the big screen because this movie is wild. And to, I think this is Leo's best performance. Again, love, love the Revenant. He has great performances, you know, throughout his career. But I do think Wolf of Wall Street is his best performance because he's three hours of just him going berserk, and I think it's very, very. Like I said, it's it's you're just you're 
you're in awe by him because he's doing some wild things in this movie that are unspeakable and are just like, oh, I can't believe he's actually doing that. There's no way. So, wh- wow. Like, what am, I, what am I looking at? And I do think it's his best performance. Yeah, it's three hours long, but Leo in that movie is just, he just, it shows why he's one of those of the best actors working today and why everyone loves him because it's just, he again, gives it his all. So, love that movie. Great book. You read the book. I highly recommend the book of that as well because the book is very, like, it's told by Jordan Belford, you know, by him, but it's the book is very, it's, it's through his eyes compared to Leo's eyes or uh, Scorsese's eyes. So that's how, that's how I would say the book is. But uh, yeah, those are my top 10. Uh, like I said, I, I always kind of like, I, I love all the favorites that I, I will talk about for hours, but I want to bore you with that. And I'll probably bring it up on the show, on the, the show here and there uh, in upcoming episodes. But yeah, guys. So, like I said, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed me just kind of rambling and just um, talking about kind of, kind of backstory of myself and the show. Uh, it just the show means a lot to me. The show is very something I'm passionate about. It's you know every week I look forward to it because I'm just talking to. I'm hoping the show reaches audiences of all over the world, or all, all audiences, because like I said, we're just we're just movie nerds talking about why we love movies and what's going on in the world of TV and entertainment and movies and films and who we're watching as filmmakers. And it's just a show that it makes me, I get very happy, get, get very happy talking about. So it's just, uh, it's every week we're excited to bring you another episode. So as always guys, my name is Doug Jones. Uh, again, one of the hosts, producers and creators of the genre of your life podcast. Uh, one more time, follow us on your favorite, on your favorite podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple, uh amazon google we're on there leave us a review a rating give us a like uh we appreciate it so uh, until next time uh take care guys